Hey, hey everybody. I'm uh, Eric Jolson. I work for a company called Storage Made Easy. Um, and we have a uh, file sharing product where we, uh, among other things, uh, make object storage available uh, to corporate end users. Um, so as most of you know, um, you have a big Swift cluster, you have a Ceph cluster, uh, and it's really hard to get corporate adoption. How do you take advantage of this uh, tremendous storage system uh, with end users in your corporation? Uh, it's hard to move it outside of uh, the IT department. Um, quickly, uh, what we do is we're a file fabric. We'll unify all your storage on the left. Uh, you have public storage. Uh, you have private storage. Private storage can be private clouds or private file servers. Uh, same thing for public. Uh, the SME software in the middle uh, will create a unified view of all different storage systems. Um, we have workflows and collaboration tools to let the users uh, work on that data. Uh, we can do sharing, upload, download, password, one-time password, time expiring links. Uh, we also do governance and audit, so you can see um, who accessed the file, from what IP, did it use a password, did it not use a password, how many times was the file downloaded? If it was a mail made available for one day, did it download it once or 10 times, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, then we have a suite of uh, desktop tools. So we have drive letter mappings for Windows, Mac, uh, mount points for Linux clients, uh, iPad, Android, Windows tablets, uh, to let the end users access their data, uh, in addition to a, a mobile browser interface and a desktop browser interface. So uh, I think my PowerPoint deck is done. I'm going to jump into a demo and show you, uh, show you what this looks like. If the display gods are with us. So uh, I will log out. SME uh, login, um, brandable, white label all controlled uh, by the admin. So I have created an organization called uh, Barcelona here. I log on. I've tried to set up as little as possible to show you uh, how this works. So. Um, I have added one, one default provider. I have an OpenStack Swift provider. Um, simple connection. Uh, not done very much else. We can look at some statistics on that provider. Uh, I've turned on temporary URL support. I don't need DLO here. Uh, I mapped a few containers. I have a default container. Um, I can create new containers right here. Um, I can resync. I can resync my files. So if files are added, objects are added outside of SME, um, I can go and re relist those containers. Um, so in addition to that, uh, to make this work, um, I've added an authentication system. So to delegate authentication. Um, outside of the keystone, uh, since your end users are most likely an Active Directory, LDAP directory um, storage for all your users. Uh, we tie in right there. Uh, regular AD details. Um, I made a restriction here. So I will only import users if they're a member of my global security common group. Um, otherwise, they can't use SME. I've also added a. Uh, personal home folder for each user. So when a user log on, I will use their, their AD credentials to log on to the Swift cluster. Pretty simple so far. Um, so we'll go on. We have to create some groups for authorization. So I will go uh, to look in my Active Directory. 
I'll grab, um, can filter on my global security groups. I have common engineering finance. Um, of course, be more in the real world. Pretty simple. All imported. Uh, I need to grab some users. I can do the same thing. So we can schedule this, of course, to synchronize on a schedule uh, from, from the groups that are approved. Uh, but I'm doing it manually here to show you. Um, same thing, I'll get all my users. In this case, there's only two users in that group. Uh, I'll pick them all and we'll add them. And we can also see some uh, Active Directory group memberships being mapped already. Um, not, not much more to say. Um, so if I jump over into the file manager, uh, here I'm an administrator. Um, so I have a slightly different view than an end user. I see in my root, I have files. I see my whole Swift cluster. I see my containers. Um, for simplicity, I've named them, uh, named them to match my groups. Uh, with a common common container here. Right now, to an end user, uh, they're not uh, available. By default, we hide. Uh, authorization is no access. Um, so we have to go in, give, give people some permissions, jump over um, to your shared folders. Um, I will take the common folder. And by default, um, I'll give my common group download and upload. They can create subfolders. I'll pick my um, engineering team. Maybe I'll be more granular here. Uh, so I'll pick my engineering group from AD. Um, they can manage their own permissions. They can share it out with other users. Um, And that's it. Uh, same thing for a finance group. Uh, I will add the finance role. They can read and download, write and upload. Make sure, good, close. So that's it. Now to add, add and remove uh, privileges to these um, folders simply add and remove memberships in AD. Uh, and no one, no one has to touch this interface again to keep the continuity uh, in your IT support department. Um, we can do more things with these folders, of course. Uh, we can turn on Audit Watch, uh, create events based on, um, I can create events based on activity of the files in these folders. That's, that's for the private demo in our booth. Um, Talk a little about users. So on the user level here, um, pick a user. We'll pick user number one. As you see, uh, we can do some additional settings. Uh, give them a quota. You can block them from end user tools. So maybe user number one will block him from using the old BlackBerry. Uh, maybe he doesn't have a Windows phone. Um, we can add IP subnets that they can access it from. Maybe some users can only come from inside the network or VPN, uh, not from anywhere uh, in the world. So pretty quick, uh, grant that I had two users and three groups. Um, I will switch. I am now a user. Uh, and I have left my system in a multi-tenant fashion. So I will have to specify my organization. And my biggest flaw is I cannot type passwords and talk, because then I will tell you the password. So sorry for the pause. Um, see if this, so this user is never logged on, brand new user. Uh, we will see what happens. So it's uh, by default for end users. I, I, I take you into the, to the file view. Um, 
you could have an uh, internal intranet page here too where it loads a um, it loads an intranet page with an RSS ticker or you know corporate information. So now, uh, as an engineering user, uh, I see the common folder. I see my engineering folder. I see my home folder, which is new. Uh, we never saw that as the admin user. And uh, I don't see the finance folder. I have my one, one container. I have a couple of images uh, that must have been here since before. So they've, they've been found. We'll bring out some information about this image, see what it might be. So we'll render a preview for you. A couple of cats. Um, we can also look at information about this image. Uh, since it wasn't uploaded through our system, we don't have the IP it came from. Uh, but if you upload a new file through SME, uh, we will also record the IP address that the end user client was sitting on. Second image, same thing. Uh, we show you the metadata here. Um, can enable workflows, add comments uh, to these files. So what that looks like for a, a Word document. Should be an engineering document here. Um, this was uploaded uh, through the admin user. So you can see my owner is, uh, has a name, an email address. Uh, we see that I did this uh, from right here in Catalonia. Uh, this morning, um, double click that file. We have a, a browser helper protocol handler. We'll open up the Word file right in Microsoft Word or the associated program. Uh, laptop is a little slow. There it goes. I can now edit, edit this file without having actually installed an end user application. It's loaded, loaded through the browser directly. Um, I will force a save, uh, and I can see if I have to take something out. I will save this document. I have a close Word. We see Word saves it. Uh, we should now have a, another browser helper uh, that will actually put this document back into the cloud. So without any end user applications, uh, your file is uploaded uh, back into the system. Um, what I was trying to show you to um, is an end user client, so what this looks like. So I'm um, jumping onto a Windows machine. Uh, where I have a drive, so I'll mount my cloud route to S colon. Uh, I have my new user and password. Oop. Cancel. Sign in. Maybe my um, internet up here doesn't let my uh, virtual machine come in, so I will I will I will jump back. Uh, but it would give you a s colon uh, right here in Explorer. It has this quick cache um, to let you interact with files just like uh, any other. What it looks like on my Mac is um, storage made easy drive, right there. I can bring it up. Uh, this is my my own account in our production server. Uh, so I have a bunch of shares. Um, I interact with them regardless of what the backend storage is. I can open, open and look in my folders. So um, let me just complete that there's no, not much smoke here. Um, my finance user is called SMEO2. OK, 
guess it doesn't help not to talk either. No. Nope. I will do it this way. Oh. Pardon. There we go. So, um, as a user, I can add a comment on a file. I will attach it. And I will switch to my um, administrative user now, since I couldn't get on to SME02. Um, and going in here to the engineering share, um, I can first of all see that I have two versions of this file uh, right there. Um, since I, um, I don't want to lose data, I keep multiple versions. As an admin, I can see these versions and I can roll back and roll forward. I can pick, pick an older version. Um, and I can also see um, comments on my documents. So I can, I can see comments that's been added here. So, sorry, wrong file. Uh, update it again, right there. So that's um, briefly. Uh, you have a Ceph, you have an object store, you have a private cloud, you have a public cloud. Bring them all together uh, into one view. Um, you select which subcontainers, which buckets um, to expose. You add user authorization access to those uh, folders. They show up in a single view uh, for end user, including home folders. Um, and it's an easy way uh, to bring this technology to the enterprise. Um, it also adds the benefits of collaboration tools, of workflows, of file commenting, um, we can tag documents, we can uh, add taxonomy tags to documents. Um, we do uh, deep content indexing, so if there's uh, common file formats, uh, take your uh, search for content for headlines inside of a file, and you can all find them. Uh, we tie this in through the, through the desktop tools. Um, uh, here, uh, so you can search from, from, from inside of an operating system. I think I realized what I did wrong here. Uh, I needed to add an organization. Let's see if that loads up. Um, so you can you can search for content of files inside of an inside of your operating system. There we go. S colon appeared. I will open this up in my Windows, and you can see my very same folders: my common folder, my engineering folder. User one still does not have access to uh, finance. You can right click. I have access to some, some new features in Windows, like I can share this. Um, I can create a quick link to share this with users. I don't want to put any restrictions on it. There's a, a quick share link I can paste into an email uh, available from anywhere uh, from the convenience of a, a map drive in Windows. So anyway, um, this is what uh, Storage Made Easy does. Um, I think uh, our joke is always, uh, we don't do storage, we, we, we just make it easy. Right. So uh, it's quick. They're going to kick me off soon. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, come see me up here in about 15 seconds. Uh, that didn't work. Sorry. It's going to give you a last, last slide.
Um, I'll give you the information when I step down. Thank you all. Thank you very much.